I'll just do it quick because we've got to go, yeah? Yeah, yeah but just, yeah. Just sure. Later, yeah. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. We have got uh, day two of the 5K. We uh, started yesterday. We played a few pots, <laughs> went down to 27,000, back up the starting stack. <laughs> starting with a very tough table today, we've got Connor Beresford, one of the top five greatest poker players of all time on our table. Uh, Steve O'Dwyer, high roller. Um, Jack Sinclair, obviously had a lot of success recently. Pride flop. Uh, my son, Thor and friend. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what we can get done. Long day ahead, hopefully. Um, 5,000 euro high roller here at the Irish Open. Man, we got some keen main eventers. What table were we? Like 68? 125, wasn't it? 68. Oh. You're not going to bully the dog, are you? No. Are we stupid or what? Are we over here? I'm, I'm We're over here. Couldn't make a decision there. First big decision of the day. General waste mixed recycling, composting with a plastic uh, thing. Went for general waste. Maybe it's recyclable, I don't know. Jesus, man. I'm very delicate today. I'm very delicate. <laughs> okay, so here we go then. We're in the 5K and we start with 50,000 chips due to a series of unfortunate events, small pots. Here on day one, we registered in the evening. We lose about 20K. So we start this hand with about 30,000. The blinds are 500, 1K. We have the ace jack and we raise to 2,200. It's folded to the big blind who is a decent regular. I've played with him live before. Seems like I've probably played with him online before uh, and defends our 2200 open. There it is again, ace of clubs, jack of spades. Flop is queen, seven, three, one heart and two diamonds. So fairly connected board. I do think I'm just gonna treat myself and see bet pretty wide here. Obviously I still have a lot of very strong hands that want the value bet. My opponent still has a very wide range. We can deny a lot of equity. So probably a board we're just going to do a lot of a lot of small betting on. If this was a little bit more connected, if this was like a queen four five two tone, we might take some more bets. But there are a few straight draws with the queen seven three. Our twenty two hundred bet is called, and the turn is a king of hearts, which is going to improve some of my bluffs. It's a little little tougher for my opponent to get here with a lot of king x hands. I obviously have ace king, king queen, king jack, king ten, king nine, probably down as low as king seven suited as well as all my sets and uh, aces and you know these types of hands. I do think it's easy to get out of line on these double Broadway boards. If we start bluffing all of our 9-10, Jack-10, Ace-10, Ace-Jack, all of our flush draws with hearts and diamonds, we can get a bit bluff heavy, but the King's just too good. We have so, so much for value. So I, I decided to go for a, a chunky bet, 8,200. This is immediately gonna pressure all the 7X, the 3X, and of course the other race size that call the flop, as well as applying some pressure to some you know, like weak queens that can't improve with no flush draw. My opponent's going to have some hands, you know, the flush draws are happier to call because they can improve versus my value. But a hand like, I don't know, queen six of clubs is already feeling very indifferent, very miserable, uh, especially versus my big sizing. Um, this is where my battery cuts out because I'm a professional vlogger. Luckily, my, my darling wife is on the rail and she records the rest of the, the hand on the phone. And I include this despite the terrible production by me, just because it was the only real hand of significance played on day one. Um, our opponent calls 8200, and the river is an offsuit jack, so obviously we'd make a pair, um, which is very occasionally going to be good. I think it's a little tough for my opponent to call too many, like, bare flush draws uh, on the flop and turn, given my big sizing, but maybe they stick around with a hand that we just have showed out. It's like, you know, maybe they do have ace four diamonds uh, or ace four hearts occasionally for the float and the, and the double peel, so... I think actually in hindsight, we could just elect to check back here when we river the jack, third pair. But there are still some queens. A lot of my other bluffs improve. So like 9-10, I don't bluff anymore. Ace-10, I don't bluff anymore because I make a straight. I don't want to bluff diamonds myself because I want my opponent to somehow, sometimes have the diamonds and fold. So in game, ace-jack felt like maybe with my other straight draw bluffs improving, maybe I still want to bluff this hand. Um, so we decide to rip our remaining 17,000 chips at the river. And as you can see from this video, maybe we'll speed this up or not, but my opponent is in the time bank for about 40 seconds to a minute and eventually folds, which makes me feel like ace-jack was not the best hand. 
and we got him to fold something a little bit better. Uh, and that really concludes day one. I think we started with 50,000 and we, we come back in uh, to day two with about 54,000. Any thoughts for day two? No. No, th no thoughts for day three. Hungover thoughts is what I have. At this hand, we defend. The blinds are 800, 1600. Uh, Johnny opens to 3200. We call queen nine. The flop is queen eight, six, two hearts. Johnny goes for a bigger bet of 5,500, which we decide to call. I think if we have a slightly better kicker, um, we might opt to check raise the queen eight, six sometimes. I think queen nine is probably the bottom end. The turn is a four, which does give us, give us a little bit more connectivity at the big blind. We make some two pairs. Maybe we make some straights even. So Johnny decides to check back. I do think he still value bets most of his better hands. Uh, all of his strong queens probably still want to go for a bet on the turn most of the time. So when the river is a jack, I'm feeling pretty confident that my queen nine is good. Uh, we decide to go for quite a chunky valley bet, 11 and a half thousand. Um, I think it'd be pretty easy for me to bluff something. Um, obviously, I have like nine, ten. Oh, that makes a straight. I wouldn't bluff this. I wouldn't bluff with a straight, but I would bet with nine, ten, I suppose. Maybe we'd have to bluff some of the... Uh, the four X hands, like four five or four seven, that that make bottom pair, um, or maybe some of our ace high backdoors or something along these lines. But I think it's still a board where Johnny's going to check back it and bluff catch us a lot wider than than the hand that we have than the queen nine. We bet eleven and a half thousand. He folds, and we win the pot. First pot on day two, and we've got a very tough table here. Um, but we're up to about sixty k, uh, and we're in very reasonable shape to compete. Okay, so blinds are up now to 1k, 2k. We start the hand with just over 50,000, so we're about 25 big blinds deep. Um, and we face an open from the hijack, or low jack, sorry, mid position. Uh, we have jack 6 off at the big blind, which is a pretty bad hand. But our opponent who opens is, is a little bit on the splashier side. Actually just lost a reasonably sized pot. And I decide to defend for the stone minimum. We chuck in the 4, sorry, 4.5k, so we're a little bit greater than a min min raise. I think okay, defending the jack six. Flop is a very, very fortunate for us. Ace six six. We make three of a kind. Always a little difficult on these ace high boards to find check raises or bluff bluff check raises because you know we we don't have any straight draws. We don't have any overs to the board that can improve. It's a little bit more or it's a very static situation uh, for most of our defenders in the big blind. And given that my opponent is a little bit on the bluffier side and just lost a big pot, I decide just to check call, maybe try and induce some uh, two street or three street bluffs. I don't really want to shut the action down or just make them fold. I don't know, nine seven, nine ten, jack ten. All of these hands, I think they're more than capable of having. So we call a three k bet. The turn is a seven of spades. Brings a black backdoor flush draw. We check again, and opponent fires seven k. At this point, I'm once again thinking about raising, but I come to the conclusion that. I'm more than likely going to get triple barreled by an ace, at least a strong one. And there's just a very, very high chance that my opponent is is trying to blast off a bunch of chips here, given what we've seen from him uh, and given he just lost the pot before. So I'm going to give him another chance. We decide to slow play again. We call. The river is an eight. I check. Sadly, very quickly goes check, check, which I guess is a give up. Maybe it's a weak ace. I table my six and it's good and things are moving in the right direction here on day two. Okay, so the very next time we move into a blind v blind, and we pick up ace five, ace of diamonds, five of spades. Blinds are one k, two k, and after this, this last hand, we're we're about sixty seven thousand chips, something around here. So th between 32, 35 big blinds deep, uh, and to my left in the big blind, not somebody you really want to see in your big blind. It's Steve O'Dwyer, um, who has I believe over forty million dollars in live earnings. We take a limp. I think we could play some raise here. We could play some limp. We want to make sure that we have some of these aces in our limping range. The flop, after Steve checks, the flop is five, six, deuce, diamond, diamond, diamond. So we have mid pair and the nut flush draw. Um, this low middling connected type of board, obviously Steve's going to have a lot of good hands checking some of these connectors. I think he's going to raise polar. So he might raise some hands like 10 deuce, jack deuce, 930, uh, these sorts of hands. But I think, you know, hands like four, five, five, six, um, he will opt to check. So a lot of our range wants to check. We check ace-five, keep a diamond in there, call the middle pair. Again, I think we can go either way on the flop. Steve bets uh, 2,000 and we call. The turn is a seven of clubs. I check in flow. Again, a lot of these 
you know, seven eights, seven sixes, eight nines. Steve's going to have all of these. I'm relieved to see him check back. I think that gives him, you know, a much greater chance that our hand is still good. I think he'll value bet some seven X. Maybe still check some sixes. Uh, and then kind of big relief on the river. The river is a three of diamonds. Now this does bring four to the straight flush. And of course, blind v blind, after he checks, is very capable of having uh, a four of diamonds in his hand. But also very capable still of just having some king of diamonds, queen of diamonds, jack of diamonds. Um, obviously going to make some straights. So we go for a value bet of 8,000 chips. Which is, is, is a little on the larger side. But I think Steve still has to call, you know, a lot of hands worse than the ace of diamonds. So we go for max value. I haven't really played with Steve much, so... I can't imagine that, uh, you know, he has any reason to, like, hero fold against me. And does call. We table the Ace of Diamonds. Mr. Robert Dwyer mucks. And things, again, moving in the right direction. Day two, picking up chips. Another pot goes the right way. Uh, and things are on the up and up. Okay, so another orbit passes. We're actually approaching the break at this point. And we look down in the big blind at Queen 10 of spades. Obviously a very playable situation for us. And we start around 30 big blinds deep once again, I think, 35 big blinds deep. Uh, and it's the same opponent opening into our big blind. We elect to call. Don't think we have any reason to do anything else. It's uh, 4,500 chips pre-flop. We get our 500 change. And we are off to the flop. Which is very good for us. It's 10-8-3. We flop the top pair with a very decent kicker. And I think, again, there's going to be a decent amount of check raising here in theory. My hand is strong, but it is a little bit vulnerable. Obviously, because there are some nasty runouts for us, we've got to be wary on a jack, a king, an ace. Um, there can be, you know, some sort of connectivity we have with the back door. Given our opponent probably feels like he's bluffing every street at too high of a frequency, we decide to go for the slow play. Um, the turn is a king of clubs, which is one of the cards that we're not happy about. Of course, he's going to improve if he just see bets a flop uh, with a hand like king, jack, king, queen. Um, but also can just have, I think, as wide as, you know, king four suited, probably. King five. So, very easy uh, for our opponent to make a bunch of kings. But as I mentioned, just feels like he's bluffing almost every street too much. So, having called the flop with no real intention of folding on the turn, I think the, the turn call is pretty trivial. We mentioned before these double Broadway boards. 10-8-3 king. If our opponent starts bluffing all of the gut shot straight draws, you know, 7-9. Jack-9, Queen-Jack, Ace-Jack, Ace-Queen, um, and then is finding bluffs from, from anywhere else, and with all the offsuit combos, they can become pretty bl bl bluff-heavy pretty quickly, um, and with the backdoor flush draw as well. Um, we're pretty happy calling on the turn. The river is a 9, which is a problem for us uh, in some senses. Obviously, Queen-Jack improves. Maybe 9-7, Jack-9 don't need to bluff anymore. So our opponent might struggle. Under normal circumstances to find the bluffs that they need to make me uh, want to call Queen 10. But this guy just seems pretty out of line. My entire instinct is telling me that I just can't fold Queen 10. Even though the board's pretty ugly, obviously we do block Queen Jack. Um, there's plenty of value that we do not block. But I'm having a real time uh, folding against his opponent. Who bets, I believe, what, 16,500 here at the river? Nearly 17,000. So just over, you know, somewhere eight and eight and a half big blinds. And as you can see, it's kind of a large portion of my stack. This is a pretty make or break part. So after a, a little time bank, well, looking back on it now, quite a big time bank. And all the boys are on the rail because it's the break. So I've got Tonka, obviously Connor's at the table, Johnny, cameras, they're all watching. I'm like, boy, I really don't want to mess this one up in front of, uh, in front of my mates. Eventually, I summoned up the courage. Find those chips. Man, this really was a long tank, wasn't it? Disgustingly long tank. And the boys braided me for it. F*** me for thinking in a 5k, right? It's 5,000 euro buy and I'm going to have a think. I table my queen 10, hand straight in the muck. We win a nice one before break. Day two gets better and better from strength to strength. It's lovely stuff. Uh, good start. Started with 54k to start the day. I think I'm nearly up to, I want to say about 100,000 now. Beast. Yeah, I made the nut flush. 
Massive. Against Steve O'Dwyer. Paid a small pot. And then you I flopped trips. I oh. flopped trips and check called, check called, and then check, check river made the minimum, probably. Well done. That's or maybe neat. the maximum, maybe it was bluffing. Well. Probably the minimum. Uh, and then I just made a pair on the flop with Queen 10 and called down three streets, and gentleman was bluffing. So, yeah, good start. Tough table. Um, I, I, I started with 50k and I have 50k. I haven't played well, it. You just bought, I you just bought it. it. I haven't played you it. You just handy. sat in. Yeah. Yeah, so long way to go. Eight or nine paid, ten paid maybe. More. Thirteen paid at Thirteen least. paid. Fifteen percent. See now you've put that in my head, I'm like automatically oh, I, I'm, I'm like, yeah, I'm probably cashing that. Thirteen paid, that's <laughs> no problem. This is the same thing I did in the satellite with what five do you mean? when I was second in chips with five left, I was like, I got my ticket. <laughs> and then I and then you went all with ace nine? Yeah, that was fine though. Oh, okay. That was fine, right? Yeah. yeah. Do you think that was a punt for real? Actually was? Um I don't know, it could have been. I don't need to think about that. Probably, right now. With, uh, yeah, almost certainly. We're, foc yeah, no. we're focusing focus, on the focusing five. On the five focus, day, focus, yeah. focus. My table has had Jack Sinclair. He got moved. Connor's on it. Steve Dwyer to my left. Jonathan Proudfoot. Jonathan Proudfoot, the Santorin warrior um, warlord. Um, <laughs> I, I made one bet against him. He didn't pay me at the river. I, I had top pair. But uh, yeah, he's a very good player. This is a very strong table. But um, it's all right. Just gotta You're make some good hands. on top though. Yeah, we'll make some good hands. No problems. Um, what else is I going to say? I got nothing else to say. All right, and now we have a few chips. That is a Jack Nine suited. Listen, I'm still getting used to vlogging. My big, my big hands in the way, leaning across on my wide angle shot. I wanted to include this for Wadey, DTD legend. Been playing poker for a very long time, winning poker for a very long time. Got some really big scores. Recently won a platinum pass uh, to come to the Bahamas at Dust of Dawn. Bluffed me in a pot earlier and I was out for some vengeance so Wadey opens we decide to three bet the Jack Nine suited now we're at the stage of the tournament where we've got a few few chips to play with he starts starts talking to me trying to get a read says uh something about these these robotic players to Connor but me and Connor are probably two of the least robotic players when we play live I think he's just trying to he's just trying to get a read he's just trying to play some mind games chatting with the dealer eventually folds but I just wanted to include this hand you know we're making some moves now. We've chipped up a little bit. And eventually, Wadey throws his hand into the muck. Unfortunately for us, it would not be the last time that we clashed. Well, as I mentioned, it, it wouldn't be the last time Wadey and I clashed at this table. And uh, unfortunately, because I didn't record... Listen, I'm a new vlogger. I didn't record the hand, okay? get off it i didn't want to pick up my phone in the middle of hand because it was kind of an important part as well um but we're playing 3k 6k wadey opens to 12 we defend big blind with four six of clubs flop is really monstrous for us it's ace five deuce club club at this point we are 15 or so players from the money so there's some considerations with that approaching wadey decides i think bet about eleven thousand. go either way we could check raise i don't really want to check raise and he three bet rips and we have to call off in hindsight, maybe we just like check raise and fold if he jams. I don't think maybe he plays that many jams anyway. But we decide to call 11k with the flush draw and the straight draw. And the turn is a repeat ace. So we pair the top card. Wadey opens from the cutoff. Obviously, he's going to have a lot of ace x in his range. I'm still going to have some. And he bets 30,000. <sighs> uh, at this point, I mean, still have a pretty reasonable draw. But a lot of the time, even if I get there on a club it might even go check check obviously there's going to be some rivers where we're dead to, to, to full houses and in hindsight maybe i can just fold out of position to this turn bet he might he's going to give up bluffs at the river as well so we're not going to like recapture any an ev there like from his bluffs at the river by, by calling here so i don't know i really didn't like it in game i decided like i just have kind of a nice raw amount of raw equity and maybe i can get away with something on the river occasionally maybe he's bluffing sometimes and i river a six or a four alive so we decide to call i think it's pretty optimistic and immediately on the river it is a club i'm delighted with life i river a flush i take a look back at the board and it's the deuce of clubs which means that the board reads ace five deuce ace deuce which means that even though we make our flush any ace now is a full house i check and wadey fires fifty five thousand. I think it's a spot where I do still have a bunch of aces in my range, which means it's really tough for Wadey to bluff. And, you know, even if he does, I just go all in when I have an ace in my hand or I call whatever when I have an ace in my hand. So defending with a flush here is pretty out of line. I would I would need Wadey to be really, really overdoing it. And it would be really, you know, 
kind of out of line by him to be overdoing it in a spot where I just have an ace a lot of the time. So I fold, which really dents our stack. And with the blinds going up and losing this pot, it enters us into our, our short stack era. And then I saw, I saw the club and I was like, nice. And then I saw it was the deuce and I was like, kill me now. <laughs> yeah, I was like, dear diary. Yeah. No, I believe you. I believe you. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember a flush. I had a flush. I know. I already know this. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, I didn't realise it paired the ball at first. I saw a club, I was like, nice. And then I saw the deuce, I was like, <laughs> Okay, so here we are in our short stack era. Um, and the blinds are up at this point to. I want to say, get my hand out of the way. What's in the middle there? 3k, 6k. Okay, so we're still playing 3k, 6k at this point. Ace, four of clubs. It goes in. We're obviously rooting for folds. We get it through the button. You see that beast in the big blind. It's one Connor B1, Connor Beresford, who was recently on my snake draft list of the greatest of all time. He stares me down, folds, little fist pump. We got to get a few more of these through, or we got to find a double up pretty quickly. I think at this point, We'd probably be about 10 from the money, 11 paid, final three tables of the tournament, but we're in trouble and we need some help. <laughs> God, dude, you feel blotted? Do you want that twig? <laughs> I'm in trouble, bro. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Help me, surf man. <laughs> Help me, surf man. I don't feel so good. We need some we're doubles. We're both gonna bubble. I have eight big blinds. Seven from the money. No, nope, ideal. What a table. What a table this is. Unbelievable. H Dog, playing poker. <laughs> Hello, mate. How are you? Uh, Good to you? see you. Uh, no, no. Yeah. Eight away from the money, and I have fing ten blinds now. That's my wheelhouse, yeah. I've seen this episode before, though, Joe. Yes, but it ends differently. I hope so. What are you playing here? More satellites? Just non I'm not going to main ticket. Yeah. Oh, right. Satellite grinder. He's always on satellites. He can't. He's in this. He's in a. He's playing a satellite in a satellite. Your whole life is a satellite. I'm going to call, 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 call you Sputnik. I wonder. Uh, yeah, something like that. I'm not too fat to go around. You're You get too stressed out playing both. We're eight. We're eight from the money, buddy. Me and Connor are similar. He's got a bit more. Nine. That's eighth, yeah. Oh. It would be nice, wouldn't it? Plus, you know, I'd win 106k, which is also nice. Just more interesting. What do you, do you want to go outside? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we need some doubles. We need doubles quick. 19 left. Stat. I need two doubles. Maybe I'm in big trouble. I mean, I'm just thinking about the maybe I'm the maybe field, I'm just in big big trouble. I, I mean, I am. I have seven blinds, yeah. eight from the money. But it's yeah. just get a, get a hand double up. I'm gonna have a look around after break and get a hand double up. Yeah. What do you got now? Like 100 something k, 120 k. 99. 99. Yeah. <laughs> I just need to run good for the next whatever five minutes, yeah, ten it's minutes. Yeah. Fast structure, so. Yeah. Get some cards. Get we'll some be cards and back double in. up. That's sweet as a nut. Again. Yeah. And then if not into the main, maybe. Yeah. I guess. Or, the or into the Fintan Hand community free roll, which is which is ongoing. Yeah. yeah, I'll play that. It's fun. Maybe, yeah. get, maybe get on the beers if we bust. Well, here we are again then on the button. We've just been through the blinds. So we've got about 55,000 chips in front of us. The blinds are 3k, 6k. That's not even 10 bigs. And we're king 10 of diamonds if it gets folded to me. You know what we're going to do. I'm all in, dealer. There's my triangle. How much is it? Ask the small blind. I don't like that. I don't want to get called. I just want to pick up these chips. But after realizing it's less than 10 big blinds, the small blind makes the call. And then Wadey kind of looks like maybe we might get in, be getting some three-way action. I'm really unhappy at this point. Obviously, I'm kind of brutally upset at this point. Because if it goes three ways, my hand's in, in even more trouble than it is. Of course, this is just a small blind. We could very much be live. But after a little bit of pain, we are heads up and on our backs. It's King-10 against ace nine so we are going to need some help from the dealer and tragically the flop comes ace high and i'm halfway out the door before we turn a diamond for some hope and a backdoor flush draw and we get there on the river 
and we find a much needed double up. Obviously, we're still going to be short, but we're very much back in the game after a little bit of good fortune on the run out. The King Ten of Diamonds gets the job done, causing a nice little smile and a chuckle from my good friend, Connor Beresford. Oh, I call. No, what? F off. <laughs> <laughs> Ten. Ten. Shit, man. Nice time. <sighs> A fallen beast. I'm not sure I want this anywhere near me. So what it just did to you. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. We're going to have to ask you to leave. <laughs> well, I feel like I was dead when you said call like that. I was like, God. No, you looked at me like you got aces or something like no, that. You couldn't no. believe your eyes. If I had fours, I would be snapped all as well and be fist pumping. <laughs> Don't worry. I'll, yeah, I'll get him. I'll get him, bro. <laughs> Here we are again, sports fans. Short stacked on the button, looking for some help. We've only got one move with a hand like this. I think it's good to keep some of these broadways in our open jabbing range rather than race calling or race folding. We get another one through. We are on life support. Headed towards the final two tables, though. 11 places will make the money in this 5,000 euro buy an event. And we're very close. Connor, unfortunately, busted. That's his seat being filled right there. We are very close to a final two table situation. All right, we found a double up. Obviously, we're very short last break. We're down to 16. Adam McCullough's in the free roll. I'm not in the free roll. Adam McCullough's out of the free roll. <laughs> That's how quick it lasted as well. We are 16 left, 11 paid, uh, consolidating two tables of eight. So final two tables What's situation. Your chip? Not good. We we did I did double up, but yeah, I've still got like 12 blinds now, just paid blinds. There's a big sweat now as well because obviously a table redraw. They're going to redraw bottom. So right, I just paid blinds. I don't want to get back in the blinds, but I am. So where, where are you position wise? Right? Probably 16 of 16. 90 seconds. That, that makes your job, your life easy though, right? I go all in, I double or I'm out, you know? Good luck. Smash so. it. And we make it. We make it down to the final 16. And our very first hand that we play, we're in the big blind with King-9 offsuit. Blinds at this point are 4,000, 8,000. And we defend off a stack of around 12 big blinds. And I think this is gonna be good. I don't think our hand wants to rejam. It keeps some dominated 9x, dominated King-x in our opponent's range, and it's gonna flop pretty well. We flop, king, jack, 10, three hearts, top pair, flush draw, straight draw. Our opponent bets one big blind, we call. I don't think we necessarily need to raise. We could just put the rest of our chips in on the flop. Our raw equity is gonna be very good. I think my opponent still has hands like ace four of clubs and decides to just bet a large part of their range on the flop. The turn is a three, it's a total brick. Excuse me, it's not a total brick. It's the opposite of a brick. Turn is a three, but it's a three of hearts. So we make a flush, but of course we are going to lose to either the Queen of Hearts or the Ace of Hearts. Now my opponent has a lot of chips. I'm defending quite wide. I still have some pairs just like Jack-6 suited in my range, no heart. I have some offsuit broadways with one heart in my range that are pretty weak. So we're certainly not going anywhere when they bet the turn. We call the river is an ace. And as you can see at this point, we have about... 45,000 chips left at big blind 8,000. You do the maths. Five and a half big blinds. In a spot where, given how shallow we are pre-flop, we probably never really have the ace of hearts. We're probably all in with the ace of hearts a lot. So the nine of hearts is one of the best hands we're ever going to have. And our opponent with a lot of chips, I still have a lot of weak hands. I feel like they're going for it enough that we kind of have to call the nine of hearts. I do make the call. My opponent tables queen ten. With the queen of hearts coming into the final two tables 
One player was eliminated, 11 paid, we were 15 left, but I was by far one of the shorter stacks. We needed to try and find a double up, and I don't think I can get away with the nine of hearts. I'm not happy about it. It's a miserable spot. But I think we're just a little bit too strong. Maybe my opponent is going to find just enough bluffs with some under pairs. With some hands like seven, eight. Trying to force me to fold one pair of hands without a heart. That I paired off. And we bust the tournament in 15th place. I called down with the worst hand. But I had a good hand. Can you believe that Rory just got Jackson against my queen? Yes, I can. Where I, with no money. 14, 14 pay, uh, sorry, 14 left, 11 paid, I'm out in 15th. Defended king nine, off like 12 blinds. What was king jack 10 all hearts? I have king nine with a nine of hearts. Bet, call, turns the heart, bet, call, rivers of break, bet, call in, uh, and had the queen of hearts. It's a tough spot. I don't really have the ace of hearts ever, because I would shove pre off 10 or 12 bigs, whatever I had. Seemed like a, a lot of chips, wide open, capable of maybe honestly even value betting worse hands than the nine of hearts. I basically have the second best hand I'm ever going to have in a spot where I have a lot of shit hands. So I called and he had queen 10 with the queen of hearts and uh, called for the money, which is a very sad place to finish. But the Finton hand community game is free roll is on uh, and they're going to get me a seat in that. So we go again, as they say. The curse of Twix is being destroyed by me because I'm hungry. If it's actually cursed, you may not see another vlog because I may be dead. Hello. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Which is 58. This seat's open, right? How you doing? Nice to meet you. L Hughes, I Hughes again. Oh, of course. Hello, mate. How are you? I just came 15. I'm fing rattled as how I am. Oh, I'm right next to Rory Jennings and Barker. Oh, how exciting. And H. Oh, how exciting. That was a random, Rory, that was a random draw. That was a random draw, my friend. It was a random draw, Rory. We, we would never. You really think we would, we would rig it like that? Come on, show some respect. Can you believe they got me? No. I had a flush. No. I mean, obviously yeah. there were four hearts on the board. <laughs> <laughs> and my opponent showed aggression. And my photo tripled off. <laughs> Free roll. It's a community game, people are having fun, blah, blah. So, what did you do there? 2K for 12. I got given 2K. Get half my buy-in back, so whilst they're allowed, I'll be. I got my two cards, I didn't want to play them, and then I looked better. Ace 5 suited makes a lot of sense. He bluffed me, he bluffed me. I am no! <laughs> I bluffed the trap! The fake, oh, the fake <laughs> trap. The fake trap. Did you win? Nearly. <laughs> <laughs> you got bluffed, the man had six lines. So, Somebody bluffed you. I folded, I flopped top pair as well, I folded. <laughs> oh, she's gone. Attack H's big blind. Wow, oh, wow, shame. Hope I have any. Shameless, she's not even here. Good shot, well done. I'll take it, I'll take it, I'll take it. Deuce is definitely coming. Get You're gonna walking. have to hit an ace or a six. Get the him deuce walking. Is coming. Get him walking. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Good game, buddy. I got Parker, I'm not gonna Ace track against King. I had ace track. Oh. That's it, that's the end of the day. We're wrapped. Honestly, pretty disappointing end to the 5K. It was 15 paid, no, sorry, 11 paid. I was 15th for nothing, obviously. But I was kind of short coming into it. I, it's not like a pretty punishing bubble. It was hopeful to get into the money, but ended up not making it. Jumped straight into Fint and Hand's community game, which was a lot of fun. I knocked Parker out, took his bounty. They made me put it back on me, which I think is a little unfair. You know, I was stuck 5K for the day. I should have been able to keep a 100 euro bounty, but uh, I rolled it forward. Uh, and my karma was, good karma was rewarded. I came 11th for 200 euro, which I did pocket. That's the end of the day. Tomorrow we've got five-a-side football, which you may or may not, I'm getting like a courtesy 10 minutes 
um, due to fitness levels and ongoing injury concerns. And then the main event starts tomorrow. Uh, as for now, I'm going behind this curtain where there's a bar, football, shopper boards, uh, 50 Cent is playing uh, and you guys are not allowed in. Good night.